Hello everyone. Welcome to another recommendation video of your very own Crimches. Now for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about movies that are a difficult watch. They deal with difficult subjects and they aren't easy to get through. So I thought this week we're going to do some more of that because that's what we want, right? After coming home from hard days work, taking time off from studies or whatever, we just want to chill. We just want to watch someone have an even worse day than yours so that's exactly what i'll be giving you today a movie that's i wouldn't say is a hard watch certainly not as much as gargi or memories of murder that we discussed uh, in the last two weeks like those dealt with really mature subjects this movie compared to them is not as heavy but it is hard hitting it is gruesome it is violent and the real reason why i wanted to recommend this movie is because uh it it had been a while since i had seen something shakespeare and something that dealt with lies and betrayal and just humans being humans not happy with whatever that they have and just wanting to get above each other so this movie was everything that i just described it is a modern day tale which is rooted in treachery and deception but the thing that i loved most about this movie is the way that it blends mythological characters with the modern day storytelling here and the movie is a kannada language movie called garud gamna vrishab vahana i know it's a mouthful right it was a bit too much for me as well but then i understood what the title meant so title has again in the mythological subtext and to understand the title i'll need to give a short brief about what the characters are about so the movie tells a story of these two men called hari and shiva they both have had polarizing childhoods hari on one side has has had what we would call a very normal childhood he has been raised well he has a loving mother he's fed well he goes to school and then this shiva now the movie doesn't tell you where shiva actually came from in fact when we see shiva for the first time in the movie the narrator tells us that nothing much is known about shiva nobody will be able to pinpoint what shiva's origins are whoever that you ask will give a different answer except for that one incident that happened when the villagers found him and this is one of the most gruesome sequences ever put to film for me i have not seen anything like this ever before so just a trigger warning i want to give you just be prepared for these for this sequence where shiva is discovered shiva is discovered half dead in a well uh he's about 8 or 9 at that point when you see him for the first time when the villagers are actually lifting him out of the well the first thing that comes to your mind at that point is what has happened to this kid what has he done to be subjected to something like this something so gruesome as this he has bruises all over his body in fact when they are picking him up they have no idea that he's alive he is not breathing at all so when they lay him out right next to the well they are ready to take him for cremation and that's where he starts breathing and ask for water it is one of the most difficult couple of minutes that i've spent watching a movie it's not just the visuals of course that's very hard to watch but it's also when you start thinking about what this child must have gone through like he's obviously had the worst childhood that a child could ever have and that is what you take away from that scene in the following scene when he's recovering in the hospital you get to know something about his mother even though he's in quite a lot of pain he doesn't let any of the female nurses come near him because he's just repulsed by the thought of being next to another woman we get to know something about his mother and this is where the first i think is the first distinguishing factor that we get to know between hari and shiva hari on one side has a very loving mother and shiva on the other hand is deprived of motherhood completely why this is important i will not get much into it maybe i'll have a spoiler section 
later on in the video. I just want to tell you a bit about the characters before I get into some of the plot points of what happens. And the reason why I will be talking about few spoilers is because there are a couple of very important sequences that the movie has, which I'm dying to talk about. It's it's just plain goosebumps, those scenes. So I'll be talking about that later on in the video. But before that, the reason why the title is Garuda Gamna Vrishivavahana is because the name of the two characters, Hari and Shiva, are a representation of the Hindu gods Vishnu and Shiva. Hari is another name for Vishnu and there's Shiva. If you're not familiar with Hindu mythology, don't worry. That's what I'm here for. So to understand the title, you need to know one thing about Hindu gods is that some of the gods have specific animals that they ride on. And these animals in Sanskrit are called Vahanas. So an example of a Vahana would be Ganesha's mouse that he uses to ride on. And similarly, even Vishnu and Shiva have their own Vahanas. Vishnu's Vahana is an eagle called Garud. And Shiva's Vahana is a bull called Vrishab. And that's what the title of this movie means. Garuda Gamna, which means the one who rides Garuda, which is Vishnu. And Vrishab Vahana is the one who rides Vrishab, which is Shiva. And that is all that the movie is about. Yes, there's a story in it. A great one, nonetheless. It keeps you guessing. It keeps you on the foot. It keeps you surprising every step of the way. No doubt about that. But through that story, it is actually talking about who these two men are. It's a character piece on these two men. There's Hari on one side, who has been taught to get things done regardless of how they're done. The only thing that matters to him is success. He doesn't care who he bumps off along the way, the relationships that he loses. He doesn't care about all that. He only wants to be successful. And then there's Shiva, on the other hand, who does things for Hari, who does the dirty work. Whenever Hari wants to kill someone, it's Shiva that he sends forward as his weapon of mass destruction. Everybody fears Shiva. The murders that he commits are some of the most gruesome things that I was warning you about in the beginning of this video. So Shiva is that. Shiva is this guy who can brutally kill people with a blink of an eye. He wouldn't think about it. But the thing that differentiates him from Hari is that Shiva has more morality than Hari in the sense that he cares for the people around him. He cares for the relationships that he has in his life. And at one point, you even start wondering like, if he cares so much about people or human life around him, then why does he do all that? Why does he have such a violent streak? And I think personally that might be because of his violent past. Whatever that has happened to him has sort of blurred the lines between what is considered moralistic and immoralistic to him. And the reason why he does all that is because he cares for Hari. It's Hari who's actually giving him orders to kill these people. It's Hari who's actually telling him to do it because he himself doesn't want to get his hands dirty. So he doesn't care about who he's killing because in a way he trusts Hari. That is what I took away from their relationship. He is sort of like a faithful servant. And this becomes evident in a couple of scenes that I'm going to be talking about right now. So the scenes that I'm going to be talking about right now, you might consider it a spoiler, but these occur fairly in the first maybe one hour of the movie. But these are plot points which actually take the movie forward. So you might you might consider this a spoiler. So you know the drill. Go to the time flashing on the screen right now. If, if you don't want to hear anything about the movie, watch the movie and then come back and continue the video. Okay, so like I said, the relationship that Hari and Shiva share with each other is a master and servant. But the difference here is that Shiva, when he looks at Hari, he doesn't only see a master in him, but he also sees someone who would do anything for him too. Because Shiva has done so many things for Hari, because he's, he's put his life on stake for Hari, and till a point you actually think that, that Hari would do something like that, because there's a beautiful scene uh, towards the beginning of the movie in the first half an hour or so, 
we see Shiva making his first kill to protect Hari. That's the first time that he saves Hari's life. What happens is he kills the guy who's holding Hari at gunpoint and Shiva runs and just brutally murders that person. And he walks out with his head held high. And while he's walking away with his hand, holding Hari's hand and pulling him, Hari looks at Shiva in the most empathetic way possible. He's he's staring at him. You know that meme, find someone who looks at you the way dot, dot, dot. This is the image of Hari looking at Shiva the first time he protects him. Find someone who looks at you the way Hari looks at Shiva. And yes, this is the impression that you get when Shiva makes his first kill for Hari. You see the level of respect that Hari and Shiva have for each other. But that doesn't last long. Because Hari is this guy who wants to get successful. And it's not like he starts turning Shiva or anything like that. It's just that life gets to him. He just starts getting more and more successful. He has so many things in his hand. And he starts forgetting Shiva. He starts neglecting Shiva. He has better friends to hang out with. He has he has more powerful people that he knows now. And Shiva feels that. And this is the scene that I want to talk about. Towards the middle of the movie, Hari finds this MLA guy or someone that he befriends. They're sitting in his house in the balcony, talking to each other. And there's Shiva right down the stairs, waiting for Hari to come and meet him. But Hari here completely ignores him. He's not even looking at him. He's just talking to that MLA guy, his new friend. And Shiva's there. He's looking up at Hari. And at the same time, he also notices a dog that the MLA has kept right next to where Shiva's standing. And that's the first time he realizes that he's nothing more than a lap dog for Hari. That's the first time he starts having doubts about what he means to Hari. And this is the first crack in the relationship that they have. What I loved about this is this movie does not judge the characters. It does not judge either Hari or Shiva. It just tells you what these characters are and what they do. And it just leaves the decision up to you. You have to decide who's good or who's bad. Now, a lot of people who've seen this movie do side with Shiva because he's the more, you can say, moralistic of the two because he cares about relationships and all. But I would say even Hari is right in his own way. And that is what makes this relationship complicated. That makes this movie complicated. Now, the movie has gained some criticism because there's a lack of female characters in this. I think the only female character that we see in the movie is Hari's mom. And she only exists in the first 10-15 minutes of the movie when Hari is a little boy. When we see the adult Hari, we get to know that she's passed away. So it's a fair criticism. But I think this was deliberate from the creators to not have a female character or a female figure in their lives. And I think that justifies the lack of empathy that they have. The absence of sensitivity and love for each other. All of that is absent because they don't have a female figure in their life. It reminded me of Murakami's short story collection called Men Without Women, where all the stories are about how these men find it so difficult to cope with life because they don't have women in their life or because they have lost the women that existed in their life. So I think it was a very conscious decision from the makers of Garuda Gamna, Vrishabh Vahana to not have any female characters here. But that doesn't stop us from feeling for these two men because of the way their relationship changes. I talked about the time Shiva holds Hari's hand the first time he protects him. And that is a callback to the first time Hari held his hand when nobody was there for him. This is when the time when they were kids. So this is how we know how mutually exclusive their adoration is. And when you see something like this, it really hurts when their relationship goes to a point where they just can't even stand each other. 
apart from that there's another character that you should look forward to it's the character of the policeman uh i've not seen anything like this character before the way a policeman has been played in this movie usually in movies you have either the policeman who's just the most idealistic person ever or you have the policeman who's corrupt to the bone here you get a portrayal of a character who doesn't want any of it he's thrown into this lawless land full of gangsters like he's transferred to this place he hasn't willingly come here he might not even want to do some do anything with hari he just wants to mind his own business he just wants to do his work and take care of his family and that's all he wants so again i will not spoil there's a very crucial scene a scene that i haven't seen anywhere there are a lot of things that happen in this movie that i haven't seen before and that's what makes this movie special i think the usp for garud gamna vrishabh vahana is is the way it's rooted in its own local culture when you tell a story from that angle it automatically feels new this movie was made by the same makers as kantara that came out last year and if you've seen kantara you know what i'm talking about the way they tell their story through their own local culture in kantara they showed a ritual that they do in their own village here also there's a custom that they show called tiger dance and even that is very much significant there's a there's a scene where shiva does a tiger dance and it's it's my favorite scene it's got so much impact the difference that it makes to the whole story itself it's also very important but the acting that rajvi shetty who's the who's also the director of this movie the acting that he's done is phenomenal i have not seen anyone portray negative shades and positive shades in the same character so effortlessly before and there's rishabh shetty obviously who's portraying hari here you know him from kantara he played shiva in that he is again phenomenal in this as well it is a tough character to pull off in the sense that he has to be the subtler of the two and usually a subtle performance does go under the radar especially when it's in front of a character who is somewhat loud and larger than life but rishabh shetty holds his own and i really can't wait to see what these guys will do this is two out of two i would say i haven't seen anything else from these guys apart from this one and kantara so if anyone is familiar with kannada cinema please give me some recommendations below what i should watch that these guys have made and if you want more recommendations from us we come here every week you have to turn on notifications to know when we come but we don't know if you come here every week the only way we could know is if you hit the like button you give us a comment down below and you subscribe to us please let me know what you thought about this video and what type of videos you want us to make next week also i'll be back which will be with a collab video that i'm 100% sure you're going to love so hoping to see you there as well bye bye